Hi there, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're in the middle of a January thaw. It's a balmy plus 7 degrees right now, but the temperature is supposed to go down to minus 14 by the end of the day. It's raining right now, but it's starting to change to freezing rain. All my trees are still outside on the benches. They've survived the minus 22 degree weather, and they all look like they're doing really well. Even the elephants uh, look okay. So today, we're going to be working on my Chinese elm. It's one I got at the same time that I got this needle juniper. Right here. And here's the Chinese elm. These were trees of George Vanners. He passed away. He was a club member. So I got two of his trees. I got the needle juniper and this Chinese elm. So let's get it inside and we'll start doing some work to it. I brought the Chinese elm indoors. It's a really gloomy, rainy day outside today, so a nice day to work on it inside. I don't know too much about the history of this tree. I think it was bought as a pre-bonsai tree from the United States. My aim for this tree is to grow it in the style that you would see a Chinese elm out in nature. I'm quite lucky. I have a full-size Chinese elm growing in the neighborhood, and it's a really beautiful tree. It um, It's going to be the inspiration for this tree. So I've shown it before in some pictures in some of my other videos, but we'll go back and have a look at it again. I've got pictures of it in summer and winter, and there's some drone shots also. Here we are with the new drone. I'm gonna come down and give you a shot of it. It has an HD camera on it, and it's being flown by my expert pilot, Julian, my son. So here we go. It's time for takeoff. Before I start working on the tree, I'll show you a 360 degree view of it so you get an idea of the structure as it exists now. I'm going to start off by going over the good points of the tree and then the bad points of the tree. So it'll kind of give us an idea of some of the 
things we want to correct or remove or fix. I'll start at the bottom of the tree. A good point is the trunk. It has really nice taper, has nice flare at the base of the tree, and it has nice bark texture. Going up higher in the tree, it has a lot of branches in the upper canopy. A lot of branches we can select from to choose the final design. Next, I want to go over some of the not so good points of the tree. I'll start with the pot here. I don't think this pot suits the tree. It's a very unique looking pot, but I envision this tree in a low landscape type oval pot. I'm not sure when this tree was repotted last, but I know it's been a long time. So one of my priorities will be to get the surface roots sorted out so they're nice and radial and we see some of those surface roots above the soil line. Here's a close up of the trunk of the tree. I won't be repotting today, even though it desperately needs it. I'll wait till it's closer to spring. I'll just be working on the upper part of the tree today. Coming up from the base of the tree, we encounter two branches that are really low. They're kind of opposite each other. So we may have to do something with those. As we come up higher, I've got a branch that comes out at a funny angle. It uh, doesn't come out radially from the tree. It kind of comes out almost sideways here from the back of the tree sideways. And then as we come up, we divide into two fairly thick upright trunks. And there's a bit of inverse taper in these upright trunks up here. So, and the rest looks pretty good up above that. So there's lots of correction work to be done. This tree is also very two-dimensional. All the branches come out to the sides, including the two lower branches, this branch, and the upper trunks. They're all in one plane. So if I rotate it sideways, you can see that it makes the tree very skinny. There's no front and back branches much. There is some up here in the canopy, but down lower there's no nothing coming forward or backward. So it's a very two-dimensional tree. My next step for this tree is probably the most important one, and that's to study the tree, to look at the branch structure carefully and come up with a plan for the final design. Take your time when you're studying the tree. Don't rush it. You should spend more time looking at the tree and coming up with a plan of action than actually doing the work on the tree. My first work on the tree is going to be dealing with these two lower branches. I've got these two bar branches that I don't like. Um, they're very low on the tree. They're not really elegant. This one's not bad, but I don't like this one coming out horizontally. And I have another branch directly above it in the exact same placement on the tree. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this lowest branch. It's very low on the tree. It can't be developed into a twin trunk whereas this one probably can. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this lowest branch. I don't like removing old mature branches off old mature trees, but in this case, I see no other choice. I just can't live with those, you know, those opposite branches there. So here I go. I'll save this branch as a cutting and maybe we can get something growing from it. So here I go, I'm gonna use my branch cutters and I'm gonna come in and make a nice cut. There we go. Here's a close up of the pruning scar. It's quite a large wound. That's one of the reasons I don't like removing large branches off old trees. However, it will heal. Here's what the tree looks like without that lowest branch. And I think you can see it looks more tree-like already. Now that I've removed that lowest branch, I can try and find a front for the tree. I'm going to rotate it around and try and find a plane where it's, it's not so two-dimensional, where all the branches aren't coming out to the left and right, so we have some branches coming out the front and the back. Before I can start picking a front for the tree, I've got to see what my surface roots are doing. I don't want like a big surface root coming out straight towards the viewer. So I'm gonna to have to remove all this nice moss and try and get down and have a look at the roots. 
So I just want to expose the surface roots to give me an idea of what they'll look like. So while I've been digging around in the roots, I did find a grub in the soil. I'm not sure what kind it is, but grubs are never a good thing, so I'll put them outside. It looks like we've got some thick roots on this side of the tree. And this side of the tree, the soil line goes quite low, and there's some finer roots down below here. So I'll be really uh, happy when I get this tree repotted and we start developing our radial root base. So after examining the roots, I don't think the roots are much of a factor in determining the front of the tree. It has a fairly good radial root base, something that we can fine tune in the future. So I can basically pick any front of the tree I want and I'll have some nice roots. I'm liking this view of the tree as a possible front. So somewhere kind of in here and I'll explain why. From this view, it has a nice trunk line. The trunk comes towards you here. So it's not a trunk that's leaning away from you. You know, other than the like the dead on front view where the branches go left and right and the apex goes left and right, there's no other view that the trunk comes towards you. If I go around the back of the tree, everything would be leaning away. Even if I tilted the tree, it's still got a bit of a curve here where it leans away and comes back. So that's one of the reasons I like this is the front of the tree. My intention with this tree is to grow this low branch as an upright trunk. It's about the same thickness as the trunks where they split into two up above. So it needs some height to justify that thickness. Another reason I like this view, it places this small branch towards the back, so you notice the trunk line. Your eye comes from the roots up the trunk and it kind of skips this branch. This branch just fills in some foliage back here. It doesn't interrupt your eye flowing up to the division into the upright trunks. In the upper canopy, there's quite a long branch that reaches towards the back. So this type of a view puts that branch behind the tree, which gives us which gives it some nice depth. If I choose this as the front of the tree, I do have to remove a large root down here that's coming straight 90 degrees towards the viewer, which never looks good. It's always better to have them, the roots spreading to the left and right rather than coming straight out. Um, I know it needs repotting badly because I had a lot of trouble sticking my front marker in the soil. It's just packed in there with roots. So I can't really position my, uh, there's a spot. That'll have to do, that'll be my front. Somewhere around there. I do like these weeping branches. They have lots of character, lots of taper, lots of movement. They do need some cleaning up. They're starting to get a little dense in the tips and I'm starting to get some thickening here. So some thinning out, we'll fix those. So these branches need cleaning up, but they also need to be shortened a bit they're starting to get a little long compared to the height of the tree. In this work, I'll be shortening the branches to two sets of leaf buds. And I'll use directional pruning. You can tell if the branches are alive or dead by how flexible they are. If they're nice and flexible, it means they're a living branch. If they just break off in your hand, you know they're dead. I like the weeping effect of these lower branches but I don't want them to go too low. I don't want it to go below the lip of the pot and make a semi-cascading branch out of it. So I'm gonna to have to prune it off shorter to keep the branch above the ground. Towards the tip here, anything going down I'll have to remove. So we'll come in below the branch here and remove this bottom one that. There's another branch lower here, the tip of the branch I can remove like that. That keeps the branch from getting any lower. There's a few smaller branches underneath that I can remove also. 
there is a stub coming off this branch here. I'm not sure if it's alive or dead. Even if it's alive, I don't think I want it. I want the eye to flow up the trunk and out the branch and up the apex here. I don't want it interrupted by this piece of dead wood. So I'm gonna remove that. Just like that. I'm also gonna remove, there's a dead part of the trunk back here. Get rid of that. I have a branch here that's kind of growing parallel with the lower branch. And it's growing on the inside of the curve here from this upright trunk here. So I'm gonna remove this lower branch. So I'll come in here with my pruners and try and get a nice flush cut. I think that's about the best we can get it. It was a bit of a knob there. The rest of the branch isn't too bad. Uh, I can do some cleanup in the fine branches coming off of it. Possibly shorten a few of them like this one here. Can reduce that down to here. Maybe this one here. But I'll leave the rest and see how they develop. I don't see anything majorly wrong with the branch that's coming off to the right here other than just a little bit of shortening of some of the twigs and the rest looks quite natural and i'm happy with it the next step for this tree will be to go up into the apex and start sorting that structure out the first thing that i notice in the apex is that this branch here is directly over top of our lower branch it's almost like a parallel branch that will block any light reaching this lower branch. I do want to develop this more into a trunk line. So I've got to leave some space for it to grow so sunlight can get at it and it's got room to grow upright. So I may have to remove this big branch here. Well, I've looked at the tree for a long time, studied all the possibilities and I can't bring myself to remove this branch. It's too well developed. This main trunk divides into two main branches here. I think the tree would look unbalanced without it. So I'll just prune it up to keep it a little shorter. We'll just prune some of these tips back a bit. There are some areas on it that are getting a little thick. I've got too many branches coming out from one spot. So I'll have to remove some of them. I do want to grow this tree, you know, keep growing it upright. So I don't want to move all my branches growing up. And I like the weeping branches coming down also. So I think I'll just have to get rid of this lower one. I've got two branches up right here. Uh, I like the hanging branches, but got too many in that area. It's starting to get a bulge here. I have to remove this lower one here too. I don't like the way this branch just comes out 90 degrees from the trunk. I'd rather it be more forward. However, I'll just prune the tip off. We do have some branches growing in a better direction as they develop. I can maybe prune it back further and get the branch to come more forward. In order to avoid getting reverse taper and to minimize this bulging near the tip of the branch I'm going to continue cleaning it up looking at it from all angles and cleaning out those unwanted branches. I've got this branch cleaned up now there still is a bit of a bulge around here it's not a lot I can do about it at this moment I'll have to let you know this part thicken up grow more branches to heal that wound and hopefully the bulge will slowly go away. I'm going to clean up this area of the tree next. I've got a lot of branches coming out from one spot that's going to create quite a bulge here in future. So I want to eliminate at least one of the major branches 
And I think I'm going to pick this one because it crosses in front of this other trunk. So let's get rid of it. Gone. There's another branch growing down here that I don't think we want. There's two branches growing from the same spot. I'll have to go. Some branches growing inside here that can be cleaned up. One down here. Get rid of this one. And this one growing inside. And that cleans that area up a bit. This trunk line comes up here and then it divides into my two major branches here. And then at the same point, I've got all this growth here that looks okay to develop a crown, but I think this bulge is just going to get worse. So we're going to get a lot of inverse taper here. So I've got to clean that out. So I'll come in and prune it all away. Just rough cutting it at first. And then I'll come in and try and get a nice flush cut. Like that. My next operation will be to come up in the canopy and remove anything growing inwards. So I want all my branches to come up and fan outwards. I don't want them all crisscrossing inside the tree. So I want to keep that crown open and light so I can further develop it and ramify it as it gets larger. So all these branches that are crisscrossing in the inside, like this one here, will have to be removed. So let's get that one off. There's one growing on the inside here that should be removed. I often use my hand to visualize the final shape of the canopy. So maybe somewhere here, rounded canopy. So definitely some of these upright pieces will need to come off. So this branch is definitely getting too long here. I'm going to take the tip off it and get in here. Wow. Right there. And I think I'm going to bring it down even lower. Maybe to this branch here. We'll clean that up. I'm always looking for a graceful flow to the branches, so those two flow in really nicely. I don't want this branch back here. If I rotate the tree slightly, this back branch is a big problem. It curves upwards and it's got all kinds of branches coming out from basically one spot. So, and it's too high. So it's gotta be reduced in height and simplified. So I think I'm going to have to take off that entire top of it. So here I go, right here. It's a big cut. Well, that sure cleaned that up. Here's an overall view of the progress so far. I think it's getting more flowing and more tree-like. I'll continue pruning. I've been standing back and looking at the overall design of the tree. I think I want to make the trunk on this side of the tree less important and, you know, slowly develop this trunk as the main trunk. So this trunk will be sort of secondary. So I'm going to reduce it down a bit more on this side. And again, I'm always trying to look for nice flow lines to the tree. So I think I can take it right off here. Taking these 
upper trunks off. I'll just cut them off roughly for now. Get them out of the way. And then we'll come in and try and get rid of this branch. A little more. I've got a fairly major branch here that I don't like. Um, if I rotate it around, it cuts across another branch. So I'm going to remove that from this direction. <laughs> wow, that flew. There's a lot of branches on this tree, which means there's a lot of choices to make, which is good and bad. It keeps you going, that's for sure. I'm gonna have to remove this. Now, that's somewhere at my front. Here's a shot of the tree now, all pruned up. I, I dealt with a lot of the major problems of this tree today and tried to solve them. I wouldn't say I'm 100% successful with every part of the tree yet, but uh, it's got a lot of growing to do now and there'll be more selection in future to slowly refine this into a majestic elm tree. I'll spin the tree around now so you can see all the different areas that I pruned. Outside, the rain has stopped and it's snowing now. There's a layer of snow on the ground. So I'll move the elm back outside into dormancy for the rest of the winter. It's time now for today's update. Today's update is my large leaf Schaeffler bonsai. And the tree had a bit of a tragic situation. One hot summer in the greenhouse, it got up to close to 46 degrees and it kind of fried the upper part of the tree. Here's the bonsai today. The top got severely burned from the sun. At first I thought it was just the tip of a branch that died, but then later on, almost the whole trunk of the tree died off. So the trunk died off. This was not this summer, but the summer before it killed this section of the trunk. So it's starting to heal now. The live vein that was underneath that didn't get the harsh sun is still growing and it's got branches growing and the top woody part is just driftwood. It does make the trunk of this tree very unique. And I still like the tree as a bonsai. I would have preferred that this didn't happen to the tree, but it's not a total loss. I think the tree still looks good. It's more unique now, and I'll just continue to develop it. I'll give the tree a spin so you can see it from all angles. So that's the update to the large leaf Schaeffler bonsai. It had some tragedy, but I think someday it'll look even better and more unique. Before we go, I'll show you another update to my royal oak bonsais. The oak trees are growing really well, and some of the locust trees are starting to sprout now. Before we look at the locust trees, there's a little oak here that needs some help. It sprouted up and the shell of the seed is sitting on top, so it's not getting any sunlight. So I'm going to remove the little shell. There we go, you can get some sunlight now. Here's one of the little locust seeds just starting to sprout. Here's a locust tree here that's just starting to get its first set of true leaves on it.
Well, the weather has definitely gone from warm to cold now. So I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.